Okay, let's have a look at the graphs of the functions and their derivatives. So this, this is actually a graph of 2 to the power of x. So if we look at the graph there, this dotted one is its derivative here. So you can see, as we said before, like the natural log, of, this should be the derivative of the 2 to the power of x is natural log of 2 times 2 to the power of x. Now if you remember in the last video, natural log of 2 is about 0.69. So 0.69 times this graph itself will give you something lower than it. Now check when we change this to 3 to the power of x, what happens? Notice that there's 3 to the power of x and the dotted line is but just above it because natural log of 3 was 1.09. So 1.09 times 3 to the power of x puts the graph just above it. Now when, let's, what happens if we change this to e? Now if you're looking here, you can't actually see that there is a derivative graph. Although, if I put the line on it, it, it sometimes will come up with e to the x. And as you saw before, sometimes it will come up with the natural lo uh, first derivative of it. That's because, there we go, and that first derivative of e to the x. Why is it doing that? Basically because it's the same curve. Now, this is why, natural lo this is why e is important. Because the derivative of e to the x is the same as e to the x because the natural log of e as we saw before gave us 1. So the derivative of e to the x would be 1 times e to the power of x which means it's exactly the same curve. This is the only curve where that will do that every time. So there's no way, you, there's, there's no other way to get, there's no other function that will do that for every value. So every value of y is exactly the same as the gradient of the function. It's the only one that ever does it. Oh, at all times. That's why e to the x is important. So the derivative of e to the x is e to the x.